Okay, so I put it on the chart stats. Okay, so this is the R4DS uh, online learning community for the benefit of those that are following along uh, on YouTube. And this, uh, we are discussing the ggplot2 book. And today we'll be looking at uh, chapter eight of the book, uh, which is about annotations. So uh, for the learning objective for this chapter, for which we'll be looking at today, we'll be looking at plots and axis title, which is providing context uh, for the visual and changing the look of plot elements and overall appearance. So we can see that in ggplot2, as we are creating our visualization, we need to provide some metadata that will really uh, provide a key con context about the type of visualization uh, in which we are, we are creating because in every uh, data viz we create, uh, we must be able to be, uh, once we present these visuals to audience, uh, the visual, uh, the audience, they don't need to access uh, any other information. So everything needs to be presented in the data viz, just like my supervisor will always say, make sure this thing is self-explanatory enough because uh, uh, the viewer, once they are going through the visualization, they should be able to, there should be a flow in, uh, in which they can understand uh, the message in which uh, we are trying to pass across. So we are also going to look at text label that is mapping text from data and having text appear on graph as also data. So we'll be look, looking at a lot of annotations, how to add this text label uh, in our visual. So we are also going to look at uh, building custom annotations, how to write summaries, context arrows, and also textual metadata uh, to the graph, how to pass all this information uh, to the graph. Also for the final parts, we'll look at direct labeling and faceting related packages for special, special uh, issues such as highlighting. Uh, we're also going to look at the text box and also uh, HTML text. So how to add this, uh, in our visualization in which uh, we are creating. So just uh, that, that is the learning objective in which we'll be covering uh, in our discussion uh, today. So for the first part, uh, the first of all start uh, with this uh, visual. So I think I'll switch first, I'll switch uh, to my R studio because this was not clear. So in the book, just the way the book, it was rendered. So that was not clear. So this is the code in which are uh, they use in running this. So we have uh, we have this. They just say the data have already loaded. The data is from the book. We have nurses, and then they group by the group the group by year, and then the filter states, which is where we are, where we have all these states, and then the plots. They say GG plots, whereby they have x x the map the year to the X variable, they have annual salary median. Then also have, uh, they also have color. They also have color. Uh, they also have color uh, and color is equals to states. Then they use a germ line, which is going to plot the line graph. Then they have some annotations on the plot, uh, which they have title, which is annual median, uh, annual median salary by uh, Midwestern states. They have some team, to, to improve uh, the look of this uh, visualization. So if I should run uh, this code, if I should run this code, then I call G, then I call G, which is going to give us uh, this, which is going to give us this. I think this is the added uh, job, uh, vertical V line, which is going to add uh, the vertical line. So there we specify the X intercept which is uh, if they create a vector. And within this vector, they say if we go from uh, 2007 uh, to 2009, so this is 2009, this is 2007. Then they also, uh, uh, they, they say the line type should be dashed. So this line type is I don't going to see be dashed. Any, I don't see any line type or anything like that. I'm just looking at 8.1 introduction. Is that, I don't know if you're sharing what you thought you were sharing. Oh. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I thought I am sharing my entire screen. 
You are not seeing my house studio. Oh, now I see our studio. Thank you. <laughs> sorry, sorry. Let me go. But I was thinking I was sharing my entire screen. Sorry. So, okay, we are looking at this data, which is about nurses. I've already imported the data. It's on my environment. It's from the notes in which we are going through. Uh, the, I fork it from the GitHub repo, so they group it by year. And then the filter for every state where we have all these states, they grab all these states and then they, they visualize it. So they map year to the x-axis, then annual salary, median to the y-axis, then they color it by, by every state. And then they add geom line, which is going to plot the line graph. Uh, they add some annotation for the labs. They, are, they say the title, then they, for the team, they say legend of position should be none. So they remove, uh, they, they remove uh, the legend uh, from the visualization. Then they say jump V line, which is jump vertical line uh, to add uh, this vertical line on the plot. So for this, they specify that the X intercept, we need to pass in uh, the X intercept. So uh, for the X intercept, uh, they said uh, it should go from 2007 to 2009. Then for the size of that line should be 1.5. So the size of the line will be 1.5. Then the color should be uh, dark golden rod one. So the, then the line type should be what dashed. So it's going to be a dash line in which they are adding here. So the next thing they did is that they use GGI highlights which is another uh, part, which is a very useful package in which we can use to highlight uh, for any uh, area of interest in our visualization in which uh, we are creating. So within this GG highlight, it's just like we're filtering for some specific information that is that we are passing in. So they say for where we have states that is equals to uh, Minnesota, we want to highlight Minnesota, we want to highlight Wisconsin and also Iowa. So we can see that we have highlighted this, this, and this. So once we GGI highlight, what GGI highlights is going to do is going to make sure that those uh, area in which we highlight, the line is going to be thick. You can see the color and the different color. Then the other ones in which other states in which we did not highlight is just going to have uh it's just going to have a gray color. So this uh, really improve uh, the uh, visualization because it, it makes our audience to focus on specific area in the visualization, specific area of interest in which we want to convey uh, to our audience. Then here yeah, they were using team economists, which is going to use an economist team, which is what we are seeing here. Then they added scale color economics, then the name should be null. Then they, were, they used team axis.title. They said element uh, blank to remove uh, the axis title for both x and y axis. Then they said scale y continuous. So within scale y continuous, uh, they said labels, it will be comma format. So we can see that the y axis, uh, the labels, uh, we, we, they were using uh, the comma format. So that is that uh, for that uh, visualization because they save it. They assign it into this object called G uh, for the next part, which talk about uh, the curve lines. For the curve lines, uh, we have base, uh, we have base plus annotates. Base is an object uh, in which I think is already in my environment. Let me confirm. Yeah, base is already in my environment. It's a list of 10 objects. Uh, I've already imported it, it's in my environment, so they have they have base. Okay, I think I am down. Where? Okay, curve line. So we have base and then annotate. Annotate, what do we want to annotate? The geometry, we need to specify the geometry is curve. So we, for X position, we pass in 53. Our Y position should be 20, then XN, YN, then the curvature should be set to what, uh, 0.3, then the size should be one, then arrow, this is going to put arrow in the plots. Then we say the length 
should be a unit, then three uh, millimeters. So they also add another annotation so we can run can you, uh, this can code. You, um, in, in the console, can you put in curved lines so that we can see what it is? Because right now we're all we're seeing is G. Okay. Oh, no, no, just put, just put, did you run that? Just put, just go down no. as G in the console and put in curved lines. So once I put curved lines, it will yeah, show the plot. Up. It's I already know. on my environments. Curve, yeah, curve lines. So once I put curve lines, it's going there you to go. show Thank us. Thank you. Thank you. It's going to show us uh, because I've already, I've already run uh, the code. Is, so it's just going to show us uh, this uh, visualization. Show that we have average Adele, which is this value. We show that here we have average uh, chin strap, which is this value. We show that this is average uh, of gene two, uh, which is this value. So you can see that with this annotation in which we have added uh, to our visualization, it makes uh, the explanation of these graphics. It makes it very easy for our audience as they are going through reading this uh, graph. It makes it. See, can I see the code, the code a little more from the curved lines code? Can you scroll down there so that we can see what okay. the code? Okay, so we can see that this is the code that they were adding annotation. Uh, the annotation they say the jump uh, should be curved. Okay, so they specify both the x and y, x and y and then the curvature should be 0.3. The size of the line should be one, then arrow is equals to arrow, which is length units of three millimeters. So they add another annotation. This is the jump should be text. Then the X, the Y position, then they say label is equals to what? Average, average chain strap. Then is just, this is just the position can either be, because this is horizontal, uh, justification. It can either be left, it can either be center, it can be right, it can be uh, forward, uh, it can be it can be center. So we can. But uh, I think the default is always center. Then we can specify the size, which is four. Then color, which is dark yarn. Then plus we add another gem, which is cough. So for this curve, this one, we specify both the X, Y, X, N, and Y, and just as we explained above, then this is adding the text. And for the text, we said average uh, Adele uh, is just, which is left size is four. Uh, we are still using uh, the same color. Then this is the last curve curvature. They add another annotation. Then the geometry, which is curve, then they specify the X, Y, XN, and also YN. Then this is also putting uh, the arrow in that plot. So this one will be average Gen 2, because where is Gen 2, which is this. Though, uh, though one thing with uh, this annotation, it is going to take us a while for us to be able to know the exact uh, position, because it's going to take us a while to know the exact position, we keep on iterating until we get the exact uh, curve and also the exact position where we want to place uh, this annotation in the plot because we need to figure out, uh, we need to be able to figure out the X, the Y, the XN and also with the YN, we need to figure out the exact position where we can place uh, that annotation. If not, uh, we can, it used to take me a while when I want to create visualization. If I want to add annotation, it would take me some time to, before I will be able to get uh, the exact position. So we, for this annotation also, we can also wrap HTML text within our annotation. And this is going to be possible by another additional package in which they discuss in the book, which is uh, the ggtext package, which has a function that has to do with elements underscore markdown. This element underscore markdown, we just pass in our HTML code is going to render this code into an R code, in which R will understand is going to render uh, the entire text. So here we have our lab long, which is the grace uh, recession. So once I run this line, then here we are using G, which is the object we have created already, which this is the G. Let me put it in the console. This is our G, 
which is uh, which is the graph we created earlier on. But in this case, we want to annotate this G with a new annotation. But in this case, we want to put a text box. So it's called uh, the G. And then we said jump text box. So we specify the aesthetics that uh, X should be in 2015, Y should be 40,000. So Y should be 40,000, which is around a year. Then we specify that the label should be lap long. Then for the width, it should be units of 15. Then we say lines, then stats uh, should be unique. So once I execute this, uh, we are going to see, sorry. So once I run this, I just need to grab this and paste. We can see that we have added an annotation, uh, which is very nice. And we can see how R was able to convert this. Uh, this is going to be bold. We can see the great recession. We can see how it's rendered uh, this HTML code. We convert it to a useful code in which, uh, because I see, I see did this uh, a lot, maybe Tidy Tuesday in some visualization. Uh, we can see how people are using as uh, the GigiTex package. It's a very, it's a very, very good package in which we can also use in adding text uh, annotation to our to our graphics. So I'll just switch back uh, to the book. I think we are true. We are true with this. Uh, okay, I think here they specify, uh, I think this resources is also a very good, uh, it's a very good resources in which uh, Shedrick Sharia uh, uh, compose, which is a ggplot2 tutorial for beautiful plotting in R. I think I've read this before when I was still trying to uh, understand ggplot2. It's a very good tutorial in which I also recommend we also look at, I think in the, in the charts, in the Slack, I think Zainab, she has, she has dropped some other useful uh, material about uh, plotting, uh, plotting with uh, ggplot2. So, so I, think, uh, I think that is that. Uh, I think another resources is what the book in which uh, we are reading. So that is just that for annotation. It's just about we providing some additional metadata to our visualization to convey uh, the message in which we are trying to pass across to our audience. So first of all, this other part talk about plots and axis title. So like in every vis uh, visualization, we need to, once we have created our plots, we need to add some uh, axis title, some annotation like the title, the subtitle, uh, the captions, the X labs, the Y lab. We need to, uh, there are some, a, a lot of helper functions in ggplot2, so like the labs, within the labs, we can supply all these uh, functions. So yeah, this is a, a gen simple plot. It's using the penguins uh, penguins data. So the map build length uh, to the x-axis, build depth uh, to the y-axis, the, the color by species. Then they say the shape should be equals to species. Then they use geom points, which is going to uh, plot a scatter plot. Then they use uh, geom points, they pass in additional data, which is GD, then the size should be four plus team black and white plus labs. Within these labs, we can add additional metadata, the title, which is how does build size defined by species, then the subtitle source, uh, Parma station and tactical. So this is the source, but if for my own case, I always prefer the source to go to the caption Sorry, the source uh, can always be in the caption because uh, it needs to be in the caption at the bottom. Then the X, they say, should be length. Uh, the Y should be width. Then the caption, which is ggplot2 uh, book club. Okay, it's still okay this way. Then for the team, uh, for the team, uh, they, they say plot title, which is element text. Then color is this. Uh, horizontal justification is 0.5, then the face should be blue, bold. Then they say team, plot subtitle, which is element text, horizontal justification and also size. Then we have team, axis.title.x, your year. They are using another concept. They are using the GG text because if you look at uh, X, 
Okay, we surround it with star, and this is going to be in italics. So once we render that, it's going to be in italics. So we can see that this is italicized because we surround it with two as pound sign. But even with some surrounding with double, pound sign is going to be bold. So we can see that this length uh, is going to be italicized if uh, we render uh, that plot. So that is how that is how we can that is how we can add additional axis title uh, to our visualization. We can also specify add line breaks. So line break, uh, the easiest way in which I used to achieve this is for me to just, let me grab uh, this code. Uh, let me grab the code so, uh, so that I show how I can add the line break. Grab the code, book club, open a script. Okay. Uh, library. Palma, penguins. Okay, so this is the best plot. Uh -huh. So this is the best plot. Let's confirm that is the best plot. Okay, so that is the best plot. So how I'm going to add the line break. So it's for me to just say forward slash and I put N. So once I run this, so I put it in subtitle base. Subtitle, I put a line break, we can see it there. So I just put forward slash and N, then R is going to know that that's, that's, that is a line break. So I go back to the notes. So I don't know if there are any question. Uh, okay, okay, they also uh, discuss about quotes. So this one, we can look at the question mark, uh, plot marks in our house studio. Uh, we, I think in the book, there also there, there is an example on how we can add how we can add uh, quotes to the plots. There is an example in the book in which they explain. Let me quickly, yeah. So we just need to say y is equals to quotes f of x is equals to x raised to the power of three. We can see that uh, that's a quote that it, it automatically it, it's going to convert that into a formula, which is very useful. But there's, there are some other uh, examples. So, so this is just going to uh, convert that into a formula. I think the next part, they were talking about uh, labs. Okay, so removing labels, we can say labs x is equals to a string. So when we say labs x is equals to a string, uh, ggplot2 is going to remove the label is going to remove the label, but there's still going to be an empty space in that position in our plots. They still, we are, but for us to get rid of this empty space, uh, they recommend that we should always use labs, then set X is equals to null. So in that case, it's going to remove both the labels and the empty space in our visualization, which is very useful because if we say labs is equals to a string, so it's going to remove the label, but the empty space is still there uh, in our visualization. So they recommend that we should always set X is equals to null or Y is equals to null. For that, or is going to get rid of the empty space, is going to remove uh, that element uh, from our visualization. I don't know, is there any question up till this point before I proceed? No, thanks. Okay. Okay, so this uh, talks about uh, adding text labels uh, to our data visualization. So they, are, they look at uh, using uh, job text, uh, which is very uh, useful. So within that job text, we just need to specify the aesthetics. Then we need to have one particular column that, uh, that we need to reference that label is equals to that particular column, then it's going to put uh, that, those label in our visualization, but we can also achieve this uh, using the same syntax in which we saw in the beginning, using the annotation. So within annotation, we specify that what we want to annotate is text. Then we specify the X, the Y position. Then we pass in the label. Then it's going to put that text uh, in our visualization. Then when we are adding this text, is also very useful. 
that we specify the alignment of this ad. We need to justify it, and this alignment it can be either through horizontal uh, justification. It can also be through vertical justification. So for horizontal ju justification, it can be left, it can be center, which is always the default. It can be right, it can be inward or outward. Then for the vertical, uh, and what uh, does uh, what does inward or outward mean? Any ideas? Okay. Yes, I think there is an example in the book. Let's go there. I think this will be uh, very useful. Let's see the example that they did in the book where they use, there is where they did inward. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So let's grab this. Good. Okay. So go back to our studio. So I'll just remove this. It's this year. So this is a data frame. Okay, so we can print the DF. Yeah. So this is X position, this is Y position. The text is this bottom left, this top left, this bottom right, this top right, this is center. Which where is the one of inward? Sorry. Oh, you already copied it. You copied okay, it. It's okay. already in the it's in GG plot already. Okay. I mean it's in the art studio console. Okay, okay. See? Yeah, it's just below that. Yeah. So if you run up till this point, okay, we can see that this is top left, this is top right, this is bottom left, this is bottom right, and this is center. So if we want to get the inward. We'll see that inward is going to push this top left to this point. Top right is going to come to this point. Bottom left is going to push it this way. Bottom right is going to come this way. And this is going to, going to make slight adjustment to the center. So let's see how that is being adjusted. Then using uh using uh the videos. So we just said jump text. Okay. Aesthetics, we say label is equals to text. Then we say V just is inward. S just is also inward. We specify that the horizontal justification should come inward. The vertical justification should also be inward. We can see that this is top, uh, top left. We are now seeing the text clearly. We now saw, see the bottom left, bottom right, and also top right, which is very useful. This is the initial plot. This is the initial. What we have, we can see that this text, we cannot see this capital T. We can also not see this clearly. This one is tripping because uh, I think we need to clip at the, and we have not set the clip to be off. We have not off the clip, clip, clip this plot yet. So, but when we use jump text, we specify the aesthetics. We say label is equals to text. Then we specify the vertical justification should be inward. Horizontal justification should also be inward. So once you do that, we can see that we are able to see that this is top left, this is a uh, bottom left, uh, this is top right, and also this is a uh, bottom right. I don't know if I've been able to answer your question based on the inward. Yes, thank you. Okay, welcome. So what again? I think that is that. We have seen this. We have seen jump text aesthetics. We have seen this. B just uh, inward, S just is also inward. I think we have seen that in action. Uh, yeah, yeah. But we have not seen this jump text aesthetics label is equals to face. This is going to be the face. Then the font face, it can be either plain text, it can be bold. We can bold in the text and also we can italicize the text, which is very uh, useful uh, when we are. Uh, creating our visualization. So yeah, for overlap, overlapping text, uh, we can use check underscore overlap. We can set it to true. But uh, one drawback of this with this function is that uh, it's going to remove some text from our plots. But in order for us to overcome this challenge, uh, they do recommend that we should use uh, the DG repair package. Uh, they, they did recommend uh, that we should, uh, should, should consider using uh, the GG repair package once we have overlapping text 
uh, in our visualization in which we are trying to create in order for us uh, to, to overcome uh, that challenge. Uh, they do recommend uh, that we should check out uh, the GG repair package because this check overlap, if it sets it to true, uh, is going to remove some overlapping uh, text in our plots. So in order for us to overcome that, we can use the jump text repair from the GG repair package. Then we say label is equals to model. So you can see in that case, it's just going to shift this text uh, to some a little bit position in which we can still see uh, we can still see the visualization. We can still see the text on the plot. We can still read it. I think the remaining part for here is what I've already discussed. This is job label. Uh, job label is just similar to what we did with the GG text, which is job text box. But to me, I prefer using uh, the job text box because it's going to nicely format that text for me, uh, which is different from this uh, job label. It's still the same cons idea, but to me, I prefer uh, the uh, job text box uh, from the GG text uh, package because I can also wrap my HTML uh, code in that process, then I can visualize it on the plots. So the next part, okay, annotation. So uh, we do, we have seen this in the beginning part, how to uh, add annotations using, uh, in this case, we'll be using GeomRect, which is adding a, a rectangle uh, geom line. This is for line parts. This is also for line graph. This is going to create segments alongside with some arrow uh, on the plot. So we have base, which is a plot in which we have been working on. We have created that object. We just add annotates. Then we say jump should be text. We specify the X position, the Y position, the label. Then we say the label we have Adele species is on three. Iceland size is five, color is dark sand. So once we have that, we can see that we have added a notation of a text in our uh, visualizations to show uh, what, uh, we, what that Adele species is on three Iceland. So how do we add arrow to the code? So for arrow, we just need to annotate it again. We say jump is equals to curve. We specify the X, the Y, the XN, and also the YN. So, but all this, uh, I think ggplot2 is a very good package. It has a good documentation. If we are not really sure of uh, how, what are the major arguments that will go, we can just put a question mark then we check for the documentation of that uh, function. Then uh, for the coverture, they said it's 0.3. Uh, we have size is equals to one for arrow, is equals to arrow. Then they said the length should be units of three uh, millimeters. So they also add some annotation of on also a text where they say average chain strap. Uh, they also have average Adele. I think I have already shown this in the introduction. Yeah, I've shown this already. So when we now look at the base annotation, this is now going to show this, which is what we saw in the introduction when I was explaining uh, annotation. So this is shows that this is average Adele. Uh, this is average J strap. This is average Gentoo. We can see we can see how we add, I've been able to add this text annotation to make this graph, uh, to make this graph nice, we remove the legend. But for me, I will have preferred using that jump text box to add this average Adele, average chin strap, average gentle, but uh, it's always good we try a different approach in our, in our visualization. So uh, this is about the astronaut data. Uh, they did some uh, data cleaning, they filter for some specific uh, country, then they, they visualize it, they map nationality to the x-axis, hours in mission to the y-axis, color is equals to this. Then they, they flip the coordinates, code flip is gonna flip uh, the, both the x and y, is good there, where they flip it. They use jump points for scatter plots, uh, jump box plots, this is going to, uh, Plot the box plot, then add, add layer dot alpha, they set it to zero. Then they use stats uh, summary, the function is mean, 
The geometry is points. The size is five. The color is doja, uh, doja blue. Then they are noted for cough. Then they specify both the X, Y, XN on YN. Coverture is 0.3. The arrow is equals to arrow. They say length, it should be units of two millimeters. So they also add some annotations on the plot, which is still the same. Uh, here they say the interquartile range is between 25% and 75% of the values. There are some annotations here. So, but in the final outputs, in the final plot in which uh, they are trying to build, it's going to give us this. We can see that we have, this is our uh, box plot. Uh, this is the point which is source the mean value. Uh, these are some outliers. Uh, they also add some annotations. So once they add those annotations, it makes they wrap those annotations, they put some text in there to convey the message, what, uh, what this uh, visualization in which uh, we are trying to create, what is the message in which we are trying to, uh, to convey? Because this annotation is just like we passing some metadata, that is some additional information uh, to make uh, the readability of uh, our database in which we are creating to be easy for the audience to understand. So that is basically uh, what uh, the, this part is about. So the, the next is talk about a uh, direct uh, label package. So for, for direct labeling, uh, they did recommend, uh, we look at uh, GGForce and also GG highlights, which we have seen uh, GG highlights in the, in, uh, in the initial parts where the line graph in which I created, in which we are gonna highlight for, from specific uh, lines, is going to highlight those lines. So those lines which we did not filter for is, is just going to leave them uh, with a gray background. So GG highlights uh, is a package in which I've been using. It's a very, it's a very good package. Uh, you can make uh, uh, with our visuals, make it very easy, make everything to be very easy. Maybe we have, we are creating a time series plot. We have multiple lines. Then we want to highlight some specific information on those lines. Maybe I can choose that. I say, I want to highlight maybe three lines. So I can just use the GG highlights and it's going to do uh, that trick. It's going to highlight those lines. It's going to put the labels there on the plot, which is going to be very uh, useful. So the other, lines in which I did not highlight is just going to be a gray background. So yeah, base code for no, no salary. So this, they use GT teams for the team. They use library scales. Uh, uh, I think uh, there's a mistake here because they were repeating GT teams and also scale twice. So maybe we, uh, this need to, we need to clean up this in the repo. So they say G. They say NOS, and then they group by year. They filter states, or they retrieve all these states. Then the ggplot2, they map year to the x-axis. And our salary mediums, color is states. I think I have already seen this in the introduction. Yeah, we have seen this already. This was the plot in which I showed in the introduction. So they just use the GGI lights. They highlight for how many states, one, they just highlight for three states. So this GG highlight is going to highlight uh, those three states is going to put label there. Then other state in which we did not highlight is just going to be that gray uh, background, which, uh, which is uh, very, very nice. Uh, it makes things easy for us. We can also, you have the base. We say GG highlight, uh, we call GG highlight, but in this case, uh, they, we did not specify anything. We did not highlight. For any, inf we did not say, oh, I like this. Then we say facet wrap. Then we say tilde species. So we are one, it's going to be Adele, chain strap, gentle. If we are using this going for this way, then in that case, we do not need to add the legend again. We don't, we need to remove uh, the legend if we are you going that way. So uh, we, we, we can have use Joom rich checks from ggtext. So here we can pass in some HTML. So we can see we have an ash, which is this a color. We say we have Joom rich tech can modify with HTML. So we, we can have this lab HTML 
then we say G plus G, which is our ggplot2 object in which we have created initially. We say geom rich text. Then we say aesthetics. X should be this. Uh, y should be this. The label should be lab underscore HTML. So we say start should be unique. Then angle should be 30. Uh, white uh, color is white, fill is still blue. So once we do this, we can see that this is uh, uh, ggtex uh, converts this into a nicely formatted uh, R code. We can see that color. We can, we can see John rich text can modify with HTML. So we can be passing HTML from ggtex is going to render this HTML code back to R code and R is going to understand how to deal with this. So we can also use a uh, geom text box, which is just, we have lab long. Uh, here we have the great, uh, the great uh, recession. You can see this is going to be bold when we want to, because we are going to be using element underscore markdown. So this is a break, brace, uh, we have style, font face is 10 points, color is still blue. Then we have Minnesota, uh, annual salaries increase uh, during the Great Recession and then completely flattered out before rising again after 2015. So in that case, we pass in our ggplot2 object. Then we say jump text box. Within jump text box, we say aesthetics. We say X should be 2015. Uh, y should be 40,000. Then label is lap long. Then here we specify the width which is unit of 15 lines, then start, is, uh, start should be unique. So once we do that, uh, we can see that we have added a nicely formatted uh, text box, uh, which is different from our job label uh, in which we have from ggplot2. But uh, it's always uh, very good that uh, we should use uh, different approach, different tools, different packages. Uh, I think this is, uh, once we are used uh, to these uh, packages is going to make improve our workflow uh, when creating our data visualization. So, so for uh, this part, talk about uh, faceting annotations. So here we have our object, which is G, which we can say facet wrap by state, then scales should be free X. So scales free X means that the X axis we need to free the scale because uh, the defaults are setting in ggplot2 is always scale is equals to fix. So we can free the scale. We, in this case, we want to free uh, the x axis should vary based on the variability in which we are seeing from the data. So we can see that this is Iowa, this is Minnesota, uh, this is a uh, will consume. Okay, grid package scale coordinates. So yeah, we can we can use the grid package, uh, we have group tree, uh, text group, we have great recession, we're passing the X and Y position, horizontal justification, we set it to zero, uh, GP with GPA, color is black, uh, font, font size is 10, and font face should also be bold. So when we call G plus annotation custom, my group. This annotation custom is a ggplot2 uh, function. So my group plus facet wrap, which is states, then scales is 3x. So once we do that, uh, we can see that uh, this is a uh, great recession. This is great recession. This is also great recession. This is Iowa, Minnesota, and also uh, Will Conson. Okay, I don't know if there are any questions uh, before we proceed. I think we are almost there. I'm good, thanks. Okay, so in this part, okay, it's like one, you have a question? Oh, no, I don't have a question. Okay, so this part just talk about mainly uh, resources in which we can, we have the ggplot2 book, uh, we have ggplot2 tutorial for beautiful plotting uh, that has been posted to the Slack already. I think I can still put it here in the charts. It's also a very uh, 
is a very uh, good resources in which we can. We also have the evolution of ggplot2 uh, by Cedric Shera. I think Cedric is an expert uh, in data visualization. We also have introduction to GGI highlights, uh, which is also a very uh, good resources. So uh, I think uh, that is all basically all I was able to cover in the chapter. I think the next is just about uh, it's just about uh, the recording. So I don't know if there are any questions before we wrap up. I'm good, Hello? thanks. I'm good, thanks. Okay, so I think uh, that is all. So let me put stop in the charts.